Hi, it's Rex Bolt. We are going to take a brief look at the opening lines from selected novels uh, from the late great crime writer Elmore Leonard. And uh, it's actually not a bad idea. If you're trying to write a novel, you're not sure what to come up with. You maybe have a loose idea, but just come up, work on a tremendous opening line. And, uh, and then often the, the novel sort of takes off from there. It's, it's surprising. If you're not sure, try with a short story first. Just come, come up with an opening line. You have no idea really who the character is, where it's going. You just have a sort of a, you know, a character, maybe two characters, and a little tiny bit of a situation that you start off with. And kick it off, and, and it's surprising how the, the, the story and even the novel will unfold from there. I'm quite sure when you read some of these Leonard opening lines, I'm quite sure he wrote some of his novels that way. Just had a basic idea, no idea where it was going to go, what other characters might enter into it, what, what might happen at all in the, in the, in the story. And it just uh, took off from there. But these opening lines, uh, many of these are quite, quite tremendous when you, when you take a step back and think of them. Um, sometimes very simple as well, but they work. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at a few of these from uh, the great Elmore Leonard here. Uh, there's a cover, Unknown Man number 89. I think his best books were the ones set in Detroit and secondarily the ones set in Florida. <clears throat> uh, there are also some in California, later on some down south New Orleans. They're all they're all good, but I, somehow those hardcore Detroit books were, were really great. Um, and Unknown Man number 89 is one of them. He could not get used to going to the girl's apartment. I think that's some guy who's going to be having an affair on his wife, if I have that straight, and then he gets blackmailed. <clears throat> um, there was a photograph of Frank in an ad that ran in the Detroit Free Press and showed all the friendly salesmen at Red Bauer Chevrolet. Now, Frank uh, gets a car stolen from that Red Bauer Chevrolet parking lot by another guy named Stick, and they end up... Uh, going into business together, and the business is armed robbery. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tremendous book, swag. A friend of Ryan said to him one time, yeah, but at least you don't take any shit from anybody. Mickey said, I'll drive. I really like to. This is a, this is a good one here. One day, Karen DeCilia put a few observations together and realized her husband, Frank, was sleeping with a real estate woman in Boca. I mean, doesn't that make you want to continue reading? <laughs> they all do. They're, they're all just intriguing enough. But you notice one thing. He, he starts in the middle of the story often. He doesn't, he doesn't have to tell you who the people are or how they got in that situation or any background. Here's another one. Moran's first impression of Nolan Tyler, colon, he looked like a high risk. The kind of guy who falls asleep smoking in bed. Stick said he wasn't going if they had to pick up anything. What a great opening line. Th think about that. How simple is that? But again, where's that going to go? You have no idea, and, and that's why you want to keep reading. <clears throat> Another tremendous line. The night Vincent was shot, he saw it coming. Here's one from Bandits. Every time they got a call from the leper hospital to pick up a body, Jack Delaney would feel himself coming down with the flu or something. Now here's probably Leonard's personal favorite book, Freaky Deaky. I think I read where he thought he hit it just right in this book, if he had to pick one. But listen to the opening here. Chris Mankowski's last day on the job, two in the afternoon, Two hours to go, he got a call to dispose of a bomb. I mean, how do you beat that? The guy, he's working on the bomb squad, Detroit police, and he's his stint is over. It's a couple of years or whatever, brutal stint on the bomb squad, detonating bombs, and he's finally going to get uh, transferred to a, a, a safer department, 
maybe homicide or robbery detail or something like that. It's just two hours left on his final day, and then he gets a call to dispose a bomb. And that, man, I mean, what a, what a start. The Blackbird told himself he was drinking too much because he lived in this hotel and the silver dollar was close by right downstairs. And this is Get Shorty, a couple of ones that take place out in L.A. When Chili first came to Miami Beach 12 years ago, they were having one of their off-and-on cold winters. 34 degrees the day he met Tommy Carlo for lunch at Vesuvio's on South Collins and had his leather jacket ripped off. <laughs> See, a lot of writers might start that part similarly, referencing the lunch, etc., but they wouldn't think of throwing in that he got the jacket ripped off also. Here's, an, here's a classic one. Dale Crow Jr. told Kathy Baker, his probation officer, he didn't see where he had done anything wrong. <laughs> one evening, it was toward the end of October, Harry Arno said to the woman he'd been seeing on and off the past few years, I've made a decision. I'm going to tell you something I've never told anyone before in my life. Here's a simple one, but again, it sets the tone and you want, to, you want to keep reading. You want to know who this guy is. Ocala police picked up Dale Crow Jr. for weaving, 2 o'clock in the morning, crossing the center line and having a busted taillight. Foley had never seen a prison where you could walk right up to the fence without getting shot. Think of how direct these all are as well. They put you in the middle of the story, and they're direct. There's no buildup, no no nonsense, no flowery stuff, working your way, working you there. They, they immediately there you are. You're right in the middle. You dropped out of a helicopter into a war zone, basically. And then you got to figure out who everybody is. Here's uh, another one of the L.A. ones. They sat at one of the sidewalk tables at Swingers on the side of the coffee shop along Beverly Boulevard. Chili Palmer with the Cobb salad and iced tea. Tommy Athens, the grilled pesto chicken, and a bottle of Evian. Now this one is, an, is a, a really a, a beginning of the book that might top them all. Not necessarily from the opening line, but it's also a great opening line. Tishamongo Blues. Dennis Lenahan, the high diver, would tell people that if you put a 50 cent piece on the floor and look down at it, that's what the tank looked like from the top of that 80 foot steel ladder. And that's a great start, just the way that, that book starts off. But he's one of these old fashioned kind of circus high divers that they set up a, a scaffold and he dives into a little tank uh, as, a, for, as a show. Okay. But anyway, keep keep these in mind, and um, if you can, just go back through them and, 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 and sort of process them, digest them. This is the way to start a book right here. Okay. 